Have you ever done a science experiment and wondered what it'd be like if you did it big? I have. <laughs> yeah! My name is Phil, and I take your everyday science experiments and do them big. This is Science Max, experiments at large. This episode of Science Max is all about liquids. Uh, what makes something float or not float? Oh no, my loonies! Liquid density and super absorbent gel. Who wants to do an experiment with diapers? Liquids. Today on Science Max, experiments at large. Hey, welcome to Science Max, experiments at large. I'm Phil McCordick, and, and hold on a second, I'm just gonna change. Okay, that's better. Now, uh, where were we? All right, let's go make a boat. So you know that some things float and some things sink, like rocks, or wood, or uh, full water bottles and empty water bottles, or uh, carrots, foam, waffles, screwdriver, playing cards, plasticine, tin foil, potato, my watch. Hmm, wait. That wasn't, that wasn't supposed to go in there. So how, oh. Mm. So how do you make a boat? You make it out of something that floats, right? Well, most boats are actually made out of metal. Tin foil is metal and, well, it sinks. But if you fold tin foil into a boat shape, it floats. And boats don't only float themselves, but they can hold people and cargo. In fact, there's container ships crossing the ocean at this very moment that are holding thousands of tons of cargo, and they're all made of metal, which doesn't float, it sinks. So how do boats do it? Are they magic? No, of course not. Boats are science. And here, you can be science maximites. Get some tin foil and cut it into the same size pieces and fold a couple different shapes of boats and see which one can hold the most weight before sinking. And now it's time to max it out. But before we do, here's how you can fold your own tin foil boat in less than 15 seconds. First, take a square piece of tin foil, then fold it in half. Fold one corner down and the other corner down. Then open it up and ta-da, you're done. If you want instructions on how to fold a more complicated boat, go to our website. I have a feeling I'm gonna need a few extra lab coats for this experiment. Like I was saying, let's max out the tinfoil boat and find out a little bit more about why boats float. yet, but this is where we're gonna build our giant tinfoil boat, so why not? Uh, who's Nia? Oh, Phil, you're wet. I, yeah, I thought I was gonna come in over there, but I, I came in on the water sled. I, I think I had the coordinates wrong. Anyway, this is who's Nia, and she's from Let's Talk Science, which is all about science education, right? Yes. Just like us. So you're gonna help me max out the tinfoil boat. I think I dropped it in the water, hold on. Whoa! Oh, here. Where? Here it is! The tin foil boat. The tin foil boat! Bill, this is a boat? Well, it looked a lot better before I came down the water slide, but that's the idea, and then we make it bigger. What do you think? Uh, I don't think it's gonna work, Phil. Oh, well, why not? Tin foil is very thin, uh -huh. and it might not hold the shape of the boat. Well, I still think we should use tin foil, though. Why? Well, because the small experiment was tin foil, and I bought all of this tin foil. Then let's do it. Tin foil? Tin foil? Okay, high five. I will. Um, I'll take the tin foil, and you take that, and um, I'm gonna have to dry off at some point. Whoa! 
Welcome to Shipbuilding for Pirates. I'm Swabby and I've built some of the finest pirate ships for some of the finest pirates this side of the Caribbean. And I can teach you to do the same. But first, you need to know your basics. Mass and volume. Let's start with volume. <laughs> but not that kind of volume. Which of these two chests do you think has more volume? Right, this one here. Which of these two balloons do you think has more volume? Right, this one here. Volume is how much space something takes up. Which of these two chests has more volume? Hmm? That's right, they're the same. But which of these two chests has more mass? Which is heavier? Hmm, hard to tell, isn't it? But what if I told you that this one was empty and this one was full of treasure? Oh, ho, 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 ho. loonies. Now, which one has more mass? Hmm, that's right, this one. These two chests have the same volume, but this one has more mass. This chest has more volume than that one, but this one... My loonies! That chest does not have as much mass. Volume is how much space something takes up, and mass is how heavy something is. And when you look at them both together, you're looking at density. Join us next time on Shipbuilding for Pirates, and then we'll look at how volume, mass, and density work together to make something float. Oh, my precious, precious loonies. Are you all right, my pretties? They can't talk, so I'm not sure what they're saying. So, Poosney and I get to work constructing a large tinfoil boat. Our first design is just sort of a square, folded together out of a very large sheet of tinfoil. Simple, but can I ride in it? <laughs> there we go. A giant tinfoil boat, just my size. <laughs> I don't know if it's gonna work. Uh, it's too thin. You, th you think it's too thin? I feel like yes. Well, what should we do? Do you want to test it? Let's test it. Yeah. Okay. Good idea. So here's here's the most important question. Do you want to test it or should I test it? No, no, no. You test it. All right. Here we go. Putting it in. First test. Does it float on its own? Yeah! Floats on its own, no problem. If I just get in very carefully, then it will work fine. See, if, I, if, I'm, if I'm careful about how I get in, no, it's, it's fine. See, if I just get in like that. Oh my God! Bill, Bill, are you okay? Wait a minute, wait a minute. It's sort of, it's sort of, no, that's just air. You know what went wrong? It wasn't boat shaped. I think if we make it look more like a canoe, because canoes float, if we make it look like a canoe, it'll work great. No, 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 Phil. We need some support. If we add a couple of structures in between, then we add support to it. I'll tell you what. Let's make a boat like I want to make and a boat like you want to make, and we'll see whose is the best. That's a good idea. OK, let's do that. All right, let's do it. Welcome back to Shipbuilding for Pirates. I'm Swabby, and now we know what volume means, what mass means, and that together it can tell you something's density. Now let's find out why things float. Let's... Let's say we're out to sea and my treasure chest gets swept overboard. Oh, no! But it's all right. It floats because it pushes enough water out of the way, displaces it to carry its mass. But... What if my treasure chest had more treasure in it? Well, we're giving it more mass, but not more volume. Too much mass and not enough volume, and it will sink. Oh no, my loonies! You need more volume if you want to float more mass. And that is why things float. I'm Swabby, and thanks for joining me on Shipbuilding for Pirates. So, the first version of the tinfoil boat didn't work out too well. Like that. Oh my but my idea is to build a tinfoil boat more like a canoe to see if a different shape makes any difference. Tinfoil canoe! Very Canadian. Very Canadian. The canoe part, anyway. I don't know about the tinfoil part. So, Husni and I had a bit of a disagreement of why the last boat didn't work. I thought it was because it wasn't shaped 
enough like a boat. So this one looks like a canoe. What I thought is that it requires some structure. Structure so that it wouldn't fold together. That's right. And we'll see how it goes. All right. All right, here we go. Did it work? No. OK, your idea next. Did you know it's easier to float in salt water, like in the ocean, than it is in fresh water, like a lake or a pool? That's because not all liquids are created equal. They have different densities. This is fresh water, or it doesn't have anything in it. And this is sugar. If I was to put one scoop of sugar in this water and stir it around until it dissolves, now this liquid is more dense than before I put the sugar in. Here's an experiment you can do at home using liquid density. This glass just has regular water with yellow food coloring in it. This glass, green food coloring, and half a cup of sugar in it. This one has a full cup of sugar in it, and this one has two cups of sugar in it. Now, when you do this at home, you'll definitely want an adult to help you because you have to heat the water if you want to dissolve that much sugar in one glass of water. I'm going to put them all in one container. You can do this at home, and when you do, I suggest you use a very small container because you have to be very careful when you put the layers in. You can use a turkey baster or a straw. When you put your finger on top, the air pressure will hold the liquid in, and you can just drop it in. But these kind of take some time, so I'm going to use the syringe of science. I'm going to use the most dense liquid first because that's the one that's going to want to be on the bottom. I carefully put it on the bottom of the container. The next layer, be very careful, and you'll see that the red and the blue aren't mixing because they have different densities. The blue is heavier than the red. We'll add the green, and you can see even when it drips into the red, it comes back up to the top because the green liquid isn't as dense as the red liquid, and the denser liquids push the lighter liquid up. And now we're going to add the yellow, which of course has no sugar in it at all. And there you go. All the layers stay separate. If you put it on a light, you can really see it. Liquid densities. Now, let's max it out. Ta-da! The longest length of liquid layers. 12 liquids, all organized by density. Starting from the bottom, we have honey, corn syrup, chocolate syrup, maple syrup, dish soap, whole milk, water, dyed blue, vegetable oil, extra virgin olive oil, rubbing alcohol, baby oil, and lamp oil. Liquid density. I really, really want to mix it up, but it took me a long time to make this, so I'm not going to. Our first two attempts at a tinfoil boat haven't gone so well. Husnia's idea is to make a tinfoil boat and add some more structure. Because the tinfoil just wants to collapse when I get in it. So we start with a large piece of cardboard on the bottom. Then we wrap the tinfoil around it and shape it into a boat. After that, we add some supports across the top to stop it from folding in when we add my weight to it. This boat feels a lot stronger than the one I was just in. I told you. So how does all of this work? So we got some support using broomsticks mm -hmm. and then some cardboard paper. And then underneath, we have cardboard. cardboard. And so how will all of this help the boat not sink with me in right. it? Right. The broomsticks will prevent it from folding this way, yeah. and you won't sink. Good. The cardboard will prevent it from folding this way, and you won't sink again. Not sinking is my favorite thing to do in the tinfoil boat. All right, so let's try it. Let's do now, it. Okay. Are you going to get in this one? I'll tell you what, Phil. If you get in and you don't sink, I'll go after you. Deal. All right. All right, here we go. Uh, uh. <laughs> it's water working! Oh no, oh no, water's coming in. It's water working, don't worry. It's almost working. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. No, no, go. No, no, no. No, no, no. No! No! Hold on, hold on. <laughs> One, two, three, go! 
Another thing I learned is that a very light tinfoil boat can be very heavy when it's full of water. I don't know if fixing it is in the cards. I think we, I think we're gonna have to build another boat. Mm -hmm. So what do you think we should do? Let's add more structure. More structure? Oh yeah. What if we add like a metal rod around the outside and maybe some more metal rods and ribs? And we wrap it all in tin foil, and you think it'll work? Let's give it a try. Let's give it a try. Uh, don't worry about it. I've got this. No, I, I get it. I'll get you it. Sure. Okay. Oh, you. Who wants to do an experiment with diapers? Oh, oh, oh! No, no, I'm, I'm serious. You may have a little brother or sister at home, which means you probably know where you can find some diapers. But there are two things you need to remember. First, ask an adult if you can use the diapers for your experiment. And two, only use unused diapers. Okay? Okay. So, you take the diaper, and if you cut it, be very careful, maybe get an adult to help you, over some black construction paper, like I have here, and you shake the diaper over the construction paper, you'll see that there's a little powder that comes out. And this is the secret ingredient. This is super absorbent gel. What it does is it soaks up all the liquid, and diapers are full of them. And you carefully pour it into a plastic cup, like that. Now you can see I have already done it with a number of diapers. It's important to use a plastic cup because it's a little messy, although it's non-toxic, it's totally safe, but it's still easier to clean up by just throwing the cup away. Now, add some water, and what happens is this super absorbent gel absorbs the water and turns very quickly into a paste. Look at that. Now, let's max it out. Five kilograms of super absorbent gel, 500 liters of water, now, it is time to do science! <laughs> and I have my own stir stick! <laughs> yep, definitely coming along. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure if we're getting anything on this camera, but I want to make sure it's recording. Yep, it's recording. There we go. It is definitely turning solid. Well, there you go. The giant super absorbent gel experiment. Corey, Trevor. I need some help getting out. <laughs> How many outfits have I been through in this episode? How many outfits have I been through in this episode? Anybody have a towel? There you go. Thanks, buddy. That's that's great. Husnia's idea of adding structure to the tinfoil boat was definitely right. We just needed to go further. So we did it again. This time, we made a much larger boat. We started with a sheet of cardboard, then wrapped the tinfoil around and added some metal supports taped to the cardboard across the boat this way to make ribs, as well as some other supporting pieces in the front and the back. Then another metal rod all the way around the top, and finally, supports across the middle. All right, feel how strong it is. I'm really excited about this version of the tin foil boat. What we did is we used thwarts, uh, big hard pieces of wood that we did last time, but this time we have ribs. Ribs, right, which are made of a cardboard, a metal rod attached to it, and... And shaped, and we did a whole bunch of them in the, the whole length of the boat. And then we used all of this bendable metal, and we have one that runs all the way around the gunnels, and a whole bunch that run down the inside, and we even used bike fenders at the front and the back of the boat to give it super rigidity so that it hopefully won't go like all the other boats have done so far. Are you ready, Husnia? Let's do this. One, two, three, lift. All right, putting it over. It floats, 
But that doesn't tell us anything because they've all floated at this point. It's only when I, I get into it. Okay, here we go. All right. Uh, 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 uh. Huh? Huh? Hey! Hey, it works! Whoa. All right. Oh, it's working! Ha 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 ha! Look at that! It works perfectly! The tinfoil boat experiment has been done. Science Max, experiments at large. What do you think, Ms. Dia? The only reason I got into this boat is because I knew it's going to work. Really? Oh, yeah. So you knew you would never get wet? See, I don't think that's fair. I think it's time that you, okay, you, that you got wet. You yeah, I think we should yeah, go. No, no, I think no, you and I no, should just no, get no. wet right now. <laughs> just need Ooh, someone help. Whoa. Whoa. You're still dry, aren't you? Okay. That is so unfair. Science Max is a show where we take small experiments and do them big. If you want to try these experiments yourself, go to our website for instructions. But not all the experiments on Science Max are the kind you should try at home. This one, yes. This, no. Try this, don't try this. A big yes, a big no. I, I don't know how you could possibly do this one at home. And remember, if you're ever not sure, ask an adult. Thanks for watching Science Max Experiments at Large. Science! I don't know what you're saying. I don't speak treasure chest. The one thing I'm really trying not to think about is that this is the stuff that's in diapers. Let me talk to your brother. Whoa, 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 whoa. Don't talk with your mouth full.